Hello, it's Scott Manley here with a number of updates. This is not going to be one of my usual science episodes because Truthfully, I've had a lot of videos the last few weeks with a lot of different stories about Soyuz, about the Hubble Space Telescope, and, and a few other things that I want to kind of come back to. Now, on the Soyuz front, I just want to show off this fun model that I've been making. I have a 3D printer that I was uh, donated. It's a, a Prusa i3 Mark III, and it's amazing. Uh, it has taken me a little while to learn to use it. I've been learning my own modeling and everything, but this is a Soyuz that I have been working on 3D printing. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll see some of the images of the works in progress. But this is more or less the final version. It actually comes on thingiverse.com, so you can go there and download this. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a Soyuz FG. It's the same design that is launching astronauts to the space station. And uh, it sort of comes apart. So I've got to be very careful with this because it's kind of just balanced together here. but. If I just pick this up very carefully, yes, look, we have a whole working rocket here. Now, um, let's just let's just imagine it's flying to space. Well, these boosters do in fact come off, and unfortunately, yes, due to <laughs> yes, due to um, the fact that I can only pull off one at a time, we can't really do the Corolla of Cross. But yeah, we can actually pull these off. There's little pins that hold them in place. Um, so yeah, that does actually bring us to the Soyuz MS-10 updates. Leading culprit is still a recontact between one of the boosters and the core. Now, there's been a bunch of different stories, but it comes down to the fact that this ball joint where the connects to the booster to the core, this is where the force is translated, this little hinge here. Um, so if you remember the last video, I discussed the separation process. This uh, continuous firing pulls away and then the engine cuts out. And what's supposed to happen is it then falls backwards. And as this ball joint disconnects, it's supposed to trigger an oxygen valve, which causes this, uh, it causes a reaction to push it outwards. And that didn't happen. Now, it's not clear whether the ball joint just was jammed in there too hard and did not release in time. In that case, I would imagine that this stage would have just swung back in and crashed into the core, probably leading to the thing yawing in this direction. And then after the six seconds uh, timer that locks out the abort system, this would have ejected off. Alternatively, it could have released or it could have started to swing down and just simply not released correctly. Either way, the assembly of this, there's a lot of people suggesting that there was a bit more force used than required to inject, you know, to insert this thing correctly. It might have been bent in or whatever, and then they might have hammered it in or something. I, I don't know. The details are still absolutely unofficial, and I'm not going to say that this has come from any official source that I trust. So fully expect that the final version of events will will have slightly different versions. Yeah, obviously the core comes off and then you have the upper stage and that's all one unit right now. Um, there is a slight problem with printing these engines. I think I might have to fix those. It's just there's a lot of detail on this and I'm still learning to use these 3D printers. One interesting thing that did happen is one of the boosters actually didn't print all the way to the top and ended up truncated. That wasn't this one, but the excess material that was being printed then got attached to the neighboring boosters. So this one is a normal one, and this one had some of the material, and then this one had lots of the material. And the fun thing is, it almost looks like a sequence of animation frames of an oxygen tank being vented to push this off. It's, it was kind of uncanny. Happy little accident, you know, Bob Roberts style. Incidentally, yes, uh, Bob Roberts going to be at TwitchCon this weekend. If you're interested in meeting me, saying hi, flying safe, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing there. I'm just going to be there because, hey, it's in my backyard. The other, well, so yes, the other big thing about Soyuz is the schedule is pretty much holding. So we just had a Soyuz 21B, which is a slightly different version of the Soyuz. It's uh, uprated with a more more digital controls. It replaces the second stage engine with a much more efficient closed cycle engine. 
this was used to launch a military satellite, a Liana Signals Intelligence satellite. That went off successfully. There's going to be a GLONASS launch uh, in November. There's going to be a Progress cargo shuttle launch to the space station. And then, assuming all those work and assuming that the report comes off saying things are fine, they are going to have the MS-11 launch to the space station with a new crew of three. Not, um, well, the crew that they actually planned. Now, I've heard that this has been moved up a couple of weeks so that there's more time for the crew on the space station to hand over control, which is kind of impressive considering that the last one crashed. But, you know, they're going to have three test flights in between. So I, I presume that this is going to go fine. So every, everyone seems to have confidence in the Soyuz. Um, SpaceX and Boeing don't appear to have adjusted their schedules. So, yeah, we'll see that next year. Anyway, on other notes, the Hubble Space Telescope. Great news. The Hubble Space Telescope had been looking like it was on the end of life. They had, if you remember, they had three gyroscopes plus one in reserve, which hadn't been performing correctly. So when they lost one of their gyroscopes, they were down to two gyros plus the one that was dodgy in reserve. And they spent the last couple of weeks just trying to make that one that was in reserve work properly. The one had been put into reserve because it sort of worked, but it was generating numbers that were too high. So how do you fix something that's on a spacecraft which is in orbit? You can't go up there and touch it. You can't pull it out and replace it. You know, all that is gone. So they're kind of reduced to sending electrical signals to it, which literally meant that they went full on IT crowd and they tried turning it off and on again. They did this more than once. They also wiggled it a bit. And how they did this was they would turn it on and they would rotate the telescope in various axes. The idea being that they thought there was some problem with the fluid that it was immersed in and there, there might be some blockage there or something. So they, the rotation was supposed to free that up, get it to move around. And the good news is that the gyro that had been behaving anomalously is now looking like it, it will behave within parameters so that they will be able to use this to resume regular operations on Hubble in the next couple of weeks, which is fantastic. Gets a few more, uh, you know, few more months, few more years. We'll see. And uh, that's great. The other spacecraft, which I didn't make a video on, but this happened at the same time as, as the MS-10 failure, Chandra. The X-ray Space Telescope, which barely made it into, sp into space after the gold bullet incident on, spa on the space shuttle, that had a gyro glitch as well. One of its gyros started sending bad data. So they took the spacecraft offline and they spun up one of the reserve gyroscopes. They tested it with the three new gyroscopes and it resumed science operations on the 21st. So Chandra is still alive almost uh, it's almost getting on for 20 years after its initial launch so that's great um yeah but on sad news once again we're saying that kepler's dead but um, for real this time i mean kepler has been one of those spacecraft where it's been you know you're dead i'm not dead yet it comes back and says you know i've got a little bit of fuel in me i feel happy you've got to see monty python if you, yeah you, never mind um Yes, yeah, so it has once again entered safe mode due to fuel pointing, whatever. So I'm pretty sure that this is the last time we're going to get any good data from it. But <laughs> I don't know, maybe they figure something out. But it doesn't matter so much because, you know, we've got TESS, right? The Exoplanet Survey Satellite. It's now operating. It's going to be doing slightly different data formats. But it's going to be, well, it's going to be covering more of the sky in shorter integration periods. So it's going to be continuing the search and it's probably going to find way more exoplanets because the exoplanets, there seems to be a lot of these short period hot Jupiters, which TESS is going to be really good at finding. Um, the longer period planets, that's going to be a bit harder for TESS to keep up with. So yeah, um, that's what we have to look forward to. And as I said, yeah, I'm going to be at TwitchCon this weekend and yeah, see you there. Otherwise, I'm going to keep making videos about other cool stuff. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.